Hi, I'm Mary Matz, creator of Twisted Yarns. In this video, we're going to look at the moss stitch rectangle and see what can go wrong. Then I'm going to show you how to do it correctly. And lastly, I'm going to share a secret with you, which is how to get the perfect size rectangle every single time. No matter what yarn you're using or no matter what your personal gauge, no swatching involved. The Crochet Doctor is in. Let's start by examining swatches. Both of these swatches have exactly the same number of stitches in rows. The first swatch I call the dog bone. Most online videos that I looked at use this approach to achieving a rectangular shape. Let's look at the symptoms. First, it looks twisted. The primary reason is that the pattern is not compensating for the natural slant of the single crochet. But it is compounded by the secondary reason, which is the short sides of the rectangle are starting too early. After the first row, it is already misshapen with that dog bone look. Even the demonstrator acknowledged this flaw and said it will get better after a few rows. Well, I did a few more rows and it still flares on the ends and sinks in on the long sides. Frankly, it relies on the weight of the finished product to pull it into shape. But no matter how much you tug at it, it is never going to be perfectly even and straight and the center will always be stretched and stressed. Second, the chains at the center feel thin compared to the thickness of the moss stitch. This is because the weight of the crochet is pulling at the foundation. As the rectangle grows, so will its weight and so will the stress at the center. Third, color changes will always have a little step. That's because it's a spiral. Here, the color change is made at the end of the row. See the step? If you're going to use this method, then make sure to place the color changes in the corner as I did here. The step is still there, but the changes of direction at the corner disguise it. Fourth, no matter where you end, you will have a transition issue on the outer edge. It will be less obvious to end at the corner and better to cover it with an edging. Now, let's examine the second swatch. Hmm, no steps when the colors change and the foundation is firm and thick, straight sides, sharp corners. I think we found the cure. Here's how to crochet the moss stitch rectangle, untwisted. Pull out enough yarn to work the chain using two strands of yarn together. Using both strands of yarn, chain 24 for the foundation chain. What you have done is reinforce the foundation so it is the same weight and strength as the moss stitch. Pull the yarn tail through the last chain. Now continue to crochet round one with just the feeder yarn. Along this edge, insert the hook, catching only the upper loop of the chain. Insert the hook into the second chain from the hook and complete a single crochet. Chain one. Skip one and then one single crochet, chain one in the next chain and repeat until two chains remain. Skip the second to last chain and work one single crochet in the last chain. Chain two to form the first corner space. Work another single crochet in the same place to end the first corner and start the second corner. Then chain two to form the second corner space. Finish with one single crochet and a chain one in the same space. Now, continuing on the other side of the foundation chain, you will be inserting the hook into both the remaining loops. Skip one and then work one single crochet in the very next chain, chain one. This is the same place as the single crochet was worked from the other side. Then repeat one single crochet, chain one, all the way down, making sure to skip in between. 
When two stitches remain, skip one and work one single crochet in the last stitch. Chain two to form the corner space, one single crochet in the same place, chain two to form the second corner space, and slip stitch into the first single crochet in the round. Notice how it is nice and straight and the corners are sharp. Let's look at what we have. We have two chain two spaces on each end and lots of chain one spaces along the two long edges between the single crochet. Turn after each round is completed to compensate for the slant of the single crochet. Turn by taking the left edge, moving it toward you and into your right hand. This causes the feeder yarn to cross over the top edge of the next space. Do not chain up. Insert your hook into the next space, which happens to be the corner space, and work one single crochet and a chain two and another single crochet to complete the corner. Chain one to form the first side space on the short side. Then continue and work the other corner with a single crochet, chain two, and a single crochet, and a chain one. See how nice the corners have turned? Now continue by working a single crochet and a chain one in each side space along the long side. I'll meet you when you get to the next corner. When you reach the next corner space, you'll work one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet in that space. Then chain one to form a side space on the short side. Then one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet in the next corner space. Chain one to form the first side space on the long side. Then as before, you're going to work one single crochet chain one in each space along this side. Slip stitch in the single crochet at the beginning of the round to join. Turn. Once again, take the left edge, move it toward you so it reaches your right hand. You're ready for the next round. Continue as before, working one single crochet, chain one in each side space, and I'll meet you at the next corner. When you get to the corner, work one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet to form the corner space, then chain one to form a side space. In the row below, we have the first chain one space on this side. Work one single crochet, chain one in it just like you did on the long side. Then work the next corner as before. Now you can just continue around. Now let's change colors. The trick for changing colors in this pattern is you must learn to recognize the front of the last row from the back side of the last row. Here's how to tell the difference. The front side has two loops at the top facing you. The back side has only one loop at the top. It's that simple. You always want to start a round with the back side of the last round facing you. Insert your hook in any side space and pull up a loop. With both ends of the yarn, chain one. This will count as the first single crochet. Pull the yarn tail through to be woven in later and chain one more. Then continue as before, working one single crochet, chain one in each side space, and one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet, chain one in each corner. Just repeat all the way around, making sure to slip stitch at the end of each round and turn. Here's the secret to getting the perfect size rectangle every time, no matter what yarn you use or your personal gauge. Take the desired length minus the desired width 
to determine how long the foundation chain needs to be. For example, you want to make a toddler's blanket 42 by 36 inches. 42 minus 36 is 6. The foundation chain needs to measure 6 inches. So, with a double strand of yarn and a suitably sized hook, chain an even number of chains until the unstretched foundation chain reaches that length. Then, just keep crocheting the moss stitch rectangle until it reaches the desired size. This always works because the depth of the short sides will grow at exactly the same rate as the depth of the long sides. The only difference is the length of the foundation chain. I hope you enjoyed this crochet tutorial. Please take a moment to subscribe and ring the bell to receive notifications of upcoming videos. Happy crocheting!